Okay, so back to the music. So what I've done is I've put my uh, chord chart back over here because we're punching in on this new part. Get out of my way. Uh, but this is the, this is ground control to major tone. Um, I call it the chorus. Whoever did this chord chart calls it the verse. Um, so I've also made a little more screen space. I've here, I've closed the clip bin. There's a little arrow right here. Don't worry about it right now. That's where when you record little regions are made and it goes into that, but we don't need to see it. Also on the left are our tracks and our groups. And eventually we're going to need those, but we don't need them right now. So let's get them out of the way. Let's have more screen space because uh, we, we need our chord chart and we want to see what we're punching into. We also do not want to punch into the comp. The comp is a composite of other playlists that you've already recorded. The comp, you can record into it if you want to, but it's better to keep your tracks separate. So we're just going to go back to AGT1 and we're going to put a marker in for right where the chorus starts. So let's play from here. So this is the May God's, God's up be with you. Whatever. This is ground control. So I think it's going to be right at bar 19. I could do it while it plays or I could just go to grid mode. We know our shortcut, which is the tilde key, the key right below escape, and I'm going to go to grid. I'm going to click right at bar 19, and you'll see right here it says bar 19. And I'm going to hit what to make a marker? Function, enter. And you see it didn't do it. Function, enter. There we go. Stupid. Um, so we're going to call this chorus 1. So you don't have to do markers while it's playing. It's just sometimes faster because if it's playing, you can feel where the verse is and where the part. You just you know where the parts are. You're going to want markers to cue yourself for either playing something or singing something. So now we see right here we know where chorus one is. But you can also see that the chord I played before it doesn't go all the way to bar 19. I didn't let it bleed, I guess is what the technical term, uh, all the way to the downbeat of the chorus. And again, we're skipping all the boo 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 We're just going to come right in. We're going to go two bars, actually it's a, a bar and a half, uh, to the downbeat of the chorus. So what I need to do is I need to punch in here and let that D7 chord from right there, God's love be with bam, you, that's the word you, because that's the, that's the note, the chord I stopped on. And we want to hold that until, leave it open until the downbeat of the chorus, and then we're going to start playing the chorus, okay? So if I punch in again, I don't want to be in grid mode, because what if I don't play it right on the beat? I'm going to go to slip mode. I'm going to punch in right there, right before it. And the other thing I'm going to use, which is the coolest thing ever, you don't ever want to record without it, it's called quick punch, okay? So there's quick punch right there. And to turn it on and off, it's either, it's either there, and then you'll notice you've got a little P down here in your record button, or you can see there, there's the keyboard shortcut, Command Shift P. Just always remember, you want to have that little P in, there, okay, I'm not going to do it, uh, in the transport window before you record, always. And the reason is this, without, let me turn it off real quick, Command Shift P to turn it off. And let's pretend we're going to punch in right there. I'm going to give it one bar of pre-roll. Pre-roll is found here in the transport window. And I'm going to say play one bar and then start recording. So if I just, I'm not going to play just so I can show you. Punch. Okay. So there's my part right there. What if I, I like this but I want to extend it a little bit in the other direction. I'm going to grab the trimmer tool, and I'm going to pull it this way. What? It's not, it's not moving. Why not? Because I punched in right there, and it's like starting record exactly at the spot you're recording at, as opposed to with quick punch on, Command-Shift-P, I've got my little P in the record button. Now watch when I record. I'm going to... Still, I'm not going to play anything, just so I can show you. Okay, so there's my new little region. I'm going to, I still have the trimmer tool. 
Now, what if I played something, but I played a little earlier? Now, oh, look, now I can move. Now I have, so what happens is, wherever you're punching in at, however much pre-roll you have, it actually starts recording right at pre-roll. So it's so important because if you want to make crossfades between performances, if you've used quick punch and if you're using pre-roll, then you have a little bit of leeway to move stuff in case you screw up. So it's just, it'll make more sense when I play it. So let me go ahead and punch in right there. And you'll notice that I'm going to play along. It's always important to sing along, play along. So if you're singing, you're playing, you'll get the same rhythms, you'll get the same time you breathe and, and stuff like that. So when you're making crossfades and stuff, it won't sound so abruptly punched in. So I'm going to put it in record. I have one bar pre-roll. I'm in quick punch. groove there. Let me try that again. Uh, I'm going to give I'm going to give it a little more bar of pre-roll. So and here we go right here, command space bar to record. Okay, so we got that far. I could play it a heck of a lot better. I'm going to save, command S. So this is only take one. So you'll notice here, now I have this, you'll hear this punch. I'm going to turn off pre-roll. It's actually command K. It's something you're going to turn on and off all the time, as opposed to going down here, opening the transport window, clicking on pre-roll. Command K turns it on, command K turns it off, and it'll keep it to the pre-roll you had before. So I'm going to listen to this without pre-roll. So you can kind of hear that punch right there. So I'm going to, in slip mode, grab the trimmer tool, and I'm going to pull this guy a little bit this way. You know, I could also, because I was in um, quick punch and I had pre-roll, you can see I was playing it softer. But I can pull out the performance where I wasn't before where I punched in if I needed to. That's what quick punch does. It's really great for crossfades because again if I was not in quick punch mode I couldn't do that. I would not have any room for a crossfade. And then when I tried to make a crossfade you get this error that says there's not enough room to make a crossfade. And you're like what the hell? If, it ever, if you ever have that message you're not using quick punch. So get in the habit of making sure there's a P on your control, um, your transport control. I'm going to highlight right there. I'm going to hit Command F to crossfade. I'm going to hit Return, and there's my crossfade. Now I'm going to go to Track 2. I'm going to zoom out, Option Bracket, and I'm going to punch in again so I can find my punch in point. I'm going to turn pre-roll back on, Command K, and I'm going to record another chorus. So I'm going to record the chorus two more times. We're going to make a composite of the best, best chorus then we're going to do the sitting in the tin can part, and then we get to sing. So we're on the home stretch. So hang in there. Everybody, go to your playlist, record the all three playlists, AGT1, the chorus, AGT2, punch in. If you can, practice. Make sure you're in pre-roll. Practice with your crossfades, and everybody get a chorus that you're happy with. I'll come back, and we'll make a quick comp of my three choruses, okay?